With the NBA draft concluded, some NBA players are picked too high and some too low. Some of those players who have slipped may turn out to be great players in the NBA one day. As a result, we need to take a look at them. Today we'll be taking a look at the top 5 NBA draft steals. What's up YouTube, it's your boy SD Basketball back with another video and let's get into it. Man, Number 5, Chuma Okiki. Chuma Okiki is coming off an ACL tear so that is a big reason on why his draft stock fell. However, today an ACL tear is not as serious as it used to be, and he could recover to his full ability and still be a great NBA player. He will most likely be sidelined until January of 2020, but the Magic are not in a win now situation so he will get the full time to recover and not be rushed back. At the 16th pick, he may be a snag. He is a solid shooter on the court, shooting 49.6% from the field on 8.9 field goals per game at Auburn. On top of that, he shot 57.4% on 2 pointers and 38.7% from 3, making him an efficient scorer. In the NBA, he will most likely not get many touches early on, especially playing with Aaron Gordon and Nikola Vucevic if they bring him back. But since he has high shooting percentage, he will be an efficient player when he does get the ball in his hands. Now, his scoring was low as he averaged 12 points point per game in college, which is not crazy, but when you consider his role, Auburn style will play, and his efficiency as solid as it is, he, it's pretty solid though, his numbers. When you adjust for 100 possessions, he averaged 23.9 points per game, which proves his ability. He is also a solid rebounder, averaging 6.8 rebounds per game, so he can switch between the 3 and 4. This is especially helped out by his 6'8", 230 build, so he has the size to do both positions, the 3 and the 4. He is also tenacious on the offensive glass, getting 2.8 offensive rebounds per game, so he can also earn his team's extra possessions on the court as he can get more buckets as a result of that. Lastly, he is a solid defender averaging 2.8 steals per game and 1.2 blocks per game so he can hold his ground defensively. Chuma will be a solid starter in the NBA if he can go into his full potential and the Magic may need to give him a bigger role as he progresses as a player. He was definitely worth his value at the 16th pick and probably could have went higher if it was not for his injury. Number 4, Keldon Johnson. With the 29th pick, the San Antonio Spurs may have walked away with a solid pickup. Keldon Johnson had lottery to mid first round potential and fell all the way to the end of the first round, almost the second round. He is a taller guard who is 6'6 with a 6'9 wingspan, so he is a longer player who has long arms and kind of reminds you of like players like Eric Bledsoe. This was apparent in his 5.9 rebounds per game in college, which is good for a guard when you think about it. 6 rebounds, that's solid numbers. He is also a good shooter, shooting 38.1% from threes on 3.2 threes per game. In the Spurs system, the guards are more in a ball movement system to get open shots, look for him to thrive. He can carve himself a solid NBA career and definitely be a snack for the 29th pick because, once again, when's the last time you heard a great player from the 29th pick? Number 3, Kevin Porter Jr. Kevin Porter ended up going 30th and getting traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers on draft night. Kevin was a solid shooter from 3, shooting 41.2%. But let's forget the numbers for a second. Kevin missed a lot of games in college and minutes due to a quad injury and off the court issues. So I don't think we should look at his numbers 100% and we should look at them with a grain of salt because I don't think really they're really a good reflection of him as a player. If Kevin missed a lot of college minutes, we should look at his high school. And he was a former 5 star prospect who was special with the ball in his hands. He can mature and be a good scorer in the NBA, especially on the Cavs, a team with a bunch of young pieces and Kevin Love. With him being taken in the 30th pick, there's not very high expectations as most players once again do not turn out from this spot. So the risk is fairly low especially for what they gave up, but someone with Kevin Porter, his upside is very very high. And this risk may be worth that because what if he doesn't turn out? Oh 30th pick it's not that big of a deal, but if he turns out and becomes even a solid start in the NBA, it could definitely help the Cavs a team that has really, I wouldn't say no direction since LeBron left. So it may take a project to, for a few years and good, some good role models for him to move forward and become a better player. But if he is able to develop into the 5 star prospect he was stopped in high school, he will definitely be a great player in the NBA one day. Number 2, Nazir Little. Now if it wasn't for the number 1 draft steal, Nazir will probably be the biggest draft steal in this draft. And you guys could probably tell who the number 1 is going to be, so let's just move forward. Before the draft, he was thought to be a surefire lottery pick and potentially top 5. 
Nazir Little is a former 5 star recruit that was once considered to be the third best player in the nation before Zion and RJ by analysts, so you have to remember, when he entered UNC, they thought he was going to do some great things over there. But, however, one of his biggest issues was a lack of minutes and inability to get a solid playtime in the rotation at North Carolina. He was never a starter there and he ended up playing off the bench his whole time there. However, he is uber athletic and a great defender. He is 6'6", so he can play the 2 or the 3 at the next level. He has the potential of being an elite defender and a great player in a small ball lineup, especially since he's going to be in Portland who's in need of a long term solution at the 3, like just think about it, they played Evan Turner, Mo Harkless, and I guess Amino at times, like those are great, good, I mean good players, like, they're solid, but like it's not someone you can have as a solution for like 5-6 years down the line, so he can succeed in that position with work. He can also improve their defense from the jump and over time take a bigger role in offense as he works on his shooting ability and scoring. Defensively, they did need some help as we saw in the playoffs as they played the Warriors, they had some cracks in them and just throughout the season. And then offensively, I guess you can say, you know, we all know Damian Lillard and CJ McClellan is going to do most of the work for him. So if he's able to develop his game and become with a better player, he has athleticism and scoring on top of that, we may be looking at this pick in the future as something that was able to put the Blazers finally over the top of the Western Conference Finals and maybe into the finals, like not now, but maybe four or five years down the line if Damian Lillard and CJ McClellan keep up their same production. Number one, Bull Bull. Man, I don't think there's much debate on this one. Going 44 to Nuggets, who was once considered a consensus top 5 pick before he got hurt this season, Bull Bull was the biggest steal in this draft, hands down. His numbers were elite in the 9 games he did play, like, let's look at it for a second. 21 points per game, 9.6 rebounds per game, and 2.7 blocks per game. He also has the ability to stretch the court with his 53% 3 point percentage on 2.8 threes per game. Like. This is not the numbers of a guy who's gonna go in the second round. These are lottery pick and top player type numbers, especially like as a freshman, that's just crazy. He has the ability to be a legit scoring option from anywhere on the court, a good rim bounder and a rim protector at the next level if he's able to develop. Let's not forget, he was a five star recruit to add to his resume. The biggest concern, I guess that this is why I think he fell at least to the 44th, is he had the foot injury. Many blame this injury on his thin frame as he's 7'2 but only weighs 235 pounds, which is a big concern. If he's able to bulk up, that is a big factor for him. The Nuggets are building a name as a risk taking team like let's look at it, they took Michael Porter Jr. and Bull Bull in consecutive drafts, two guys with red flags on their health but they also have great upside. So he can also learn behind an offensive star in Jokic and improve his game, especially for someone like him who wants to shoot the three, be a center who could just be mobile and score. Jokic is a very like player that you want to learn from, he's the best in that category. So he will be a project that takes a few years, but if he's able to bulk up and develop his game further, this may be one of the biggest draft steals of all time if he turns out. So in conclusion, that's the top 5 draft steals of the 2019 NBA Draft. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get a notification for when I post. And I'm out.